All right. Uh, I think we are we are rolling. So good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome back on day two uh, of uh, the session to understand how can you integrate Salesforce with other systems and learn about the integration concepts. Uh, we will be picking up from where we left off yesterday. Uh, we will do a quick recap. Uh, and then, of course, uh, Jayesh has some um, additional exciting concepts uh, for today. So uh, with that, without taking further time, uh, Jayesh, over to you. Right. Uh, thank you, uh, Jigar. Again, uh, just want to confirm you were able to hear me well and there's no problem in the sound. Yep, absolutely. Okay. And uh, just I'm sharing the screen again, guys. Uh, so good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are, guys. Uh, thank you so much uh, for joining in today. Again, I want to start uh, the day saying thank you to the whole uh, OANA. Thank you to the whole Apex Hours teams. Thank you to Jigar. Thank you, everyone uh, in the team who's going to help on, out on the questions. Keep asking. And uh, again, I want to thank uh, God for this opportunity to, uh, to connect, to share our uh, knowledge with each other. Uh, so what we're going to cover today is, uh, we already finished a couple of topics yesterday, which was what were the web communication fundamentals, then message exchange formats. We looked at JSON and XML. We understood, uh, something about rest. We're going to discuss more on the rest today. Then we understood how we make external call outs to external services from Salesforce. So we called a Google API, uh, YouTube API. We showed you how it was authenticated. We had account, I had created an account, account over there. I got the API key, I called the, uh, called the URL and generated the URL and uh, I was able to call and get the statistics out of uh, YouTube API. Similarly, we gave you an uh, example or a challenge uh, to attempt for Smarty Streets API. Uh, hope people have uh, attempted that. If you have uh, any questions, any doubts, you can ask today in the end of the session. So what we're going to cover today, it's extensive. It's going to be, it's, it might take more than an hour. All the demos are going to be extensive. Uh, there is external service call to Salesforce. How uh, external applications can call to Salesforce. Uh, then there is uh, SOAP. How, 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 what is SOAP and what? how do we make SOAP call outs? Then uh, how do we call? SOAP, SOAP API of Salesforce, then difference between Salesforce REST versus Apex REST, uh, then uh, SOAP Collins, yeah, using using web methods I already told you, and then enterprise uh, versus uh, partner visitor. So let's begin. So uh, when it comes to uh, REST API, we always call it as a REST API, Salesforce standard REST API, or uh, Apex. REST API, we, we would call it, which is a custom, Apex REST API is custom. So what are the key differences between both is that REST API allows you uh, to uh, update uh, without writing a code and it, it's, it says for expose those, uh, expose those APIs and we will see that today in demo. Uh, we'll be updating some records or inserting some records via the workbench. And uh, uh, that APIs uh, are standard. We don't have to write any code. Salesforce keeps updating every every year and every releases. Uh, every release, a new API is uh, released. Like version 48 is going on right now, but we would be using version 47. So every release, there's a new API. Uh, so and they keep updating that API. I'll also show you the difference between the version 20th and version 47th. So uh, those are the standard APIs, but when it comes to, uh, and you can only update individual records, uh, uh, like let's see, we, when we will see the demo today, we'll be updating only one single case, single opportunity. When it comes to multiple, let's say you wanna do, uh, you wanna insert account and then you wanna insert, uh, first insert contact and then you can wanna create an account for that contacts, uh, contact which you are inserting. You would need two transactions when you're doing with the standard REST API. When it comes to custom REST API, you would be, uh, uh, we would write a custom code and then you would call the code one time and execute as a part of a single transaction because we don't want uh, to insert an account if the contact is not inserted. So 
this this uh, this that you want to have some logical uh, uh, flow that cannot be done via the standardized API. So we would uh, try to do it uh, via the custom REST API that we would write a code, we would uh, call single API call, and then we would first insert the contact, and from there we call the method for inserting the account, so that the account gets inserted, and if it fails, it, the transaction will roll, uh, be rolled back. So that's how you, uh, when it comes to custom REST API, you expose custom methods. You you have the capability to create your own API, and then you can update multiple records and single transactions. So that's a, a, a simple difference between these two, and uh, uh, so that was the one thing. So I wanted to also uh, quickly touch base on OAuth. OAuth is a very big concept again, but I want to just quickly touch base because yesterday we were talking about it. Uh, so when you log into Salesforce, uh, when you go on the URL first is that login.salesforce.com. Uh, it's again, just the URL, uh, you have the endpoint. Uh, when we saw yesterday, we created an endpoint. Again, these are all URLs. You put in your username, password, uh, and then Salesforce in the backend will uh, send you the authorization code. Send the application the authorization code. Application can be your mobile app. Uh, let's say you're, you're logging in via the Salesforce mobile app. Okay. You open the mobile app. You go into the, uh, uh, you put in the username and password. Then it sends, uh, uh, Salesforce will send an authorization code to your app. And then the app in the backend would uh, request for access token and uh, Salesforce will grant the access token. And then you can start accessing the uh, resources, which is like you start checking out opportunities, accounts, leads, contacts, and uh, the application will take care of the refreshing of the uh, token. If, if the state is stale, if, if, if the something changes in the backend, you would let's say you uh, someone on the on the uh, on the browser change the case status to uh, new or uh, closed. So you want to see that uh, having updated. So uh, the app automatically refreshes the state and shows you the updated state. So it it is taken care of by the Salesforce uh, the app application and it can be any other application. It will help you to uh, uh, get the uh, the real state while getting the, uh, the session IDs, it, it maintains the session ID and then it keeps refreshing the uh, state or the session and so that it never never becomes stale. So it authorizes external applications to access, access Salesforce resources. It will not reveal any username password. It's a simple HTTP based protocol and it reduces security and password management issues. So it's, it's, a, it's a mechanism again we are using in uh, Salesforce for authentication. We'll be seeing that again through connected app. Uh, we discussed the method yesterday, but again, today we're gonna focus on these methods uh, because we're gonna use custom REST API. So we have some annotations. Uh, annotations are written on the top of the methods. So these are the annotations at the REST, REST source. Whenever you wanna expose a class as a REST web service, you would write this at the, uh, at the rate REST resource on top of a class and you would have a URL mapping. I'll show you that. And then you would have various methods. We will see that in action. Then we'll, we'll, you'll get to know how these work. Get, post, uh, patch, put, delete. Okay. Moving on, uh, we have, uh, when we are sending any request and uh, response uh, to Salesforce, uh, the sales, like when you are actually constructing an HTTP request, let's say you are writing a Java program, you want to call Salesforce as API. You would be constructing a HTTP request, and a HTTP request would contain the request header and uh, the URL, which which URL you want to uh, talk to the endpoint, basically, and then the uh, what you want to interact with the data. So that request entity it would be there, and then there would be method get post put patch delete, and Salesforce will send a response, and that will contain the data. The data will be inside a body. So this is a, a request and response uh, uh, structure. And you would again send via JSON because you're interacting over J, uh, REST. So you would send JSON and receive the JSON. So you, are, you would be preparing this into your custom application code, which is on the, which is written in your Eclipse or wherever, which were application you're writing on the, uh, on the AWS server, you would, uh, you would create a request and then a response would be expected. So, and it again, it's gonna be uh, synchronous. You have to put, give the URL 
uh, and then you will have to give the authorization and OAuth token. How? What is uh, so, uh, the OAuth token? We will we will see that in demo when we are using Postman as one of the uh, ways to connect to Salesforce. All right. Uh, so, anatomy of a REST API call. The URL I was talking about. It will contain the Salesforce instance. Uh, the first part is this instance. Second is the API type you're connecting to the data. Then your which version, as I was talking about, version 20, version 40, all these versions, uh, Salesforce keeps releasing with every release. Then subtype is as object, which is the object which you're accessing, and what is the record URL. So this is a URL which you'll be constructing to interact with a single account record inside Salesforce. So let's jump onto a demo. Uh, we're gonna insert a record. Uh, so uh, and uh, we're gonna inst insert a record using post and we're gonna access the URL, uh, uh, the case URL. So this is the URL, but why this is incomplete because we're gonna use Workbench and uh, this is the post body which is gonna be and the response we're gonna expect is something like this. So it would uh, contain, we are sending the body as status, origin, subject, description, because that is, these are the fields on the case record and the response we would expect is uh, the ID of the case being created and error message or if it's successful, then it will send true. So uh, unfortunately, I was supposed to show uh, the insert via two ways, but this uh, today, the uh, somehow the Salesforce has, so Salesforce has a, uh, way to Salesforce API Explorer. It gives you an access to the Salesforce's REST APIs also, but today uh, somehow that URL is completely out and I'm not able to access that. I was supposed to show demo through that also, but we would, uh, nevertheless, we have the workbench. It, it works like this. Uh, it works similarly to Salesforce API Explorer. It, it is giving certain other APIs today because it's still in uh, beta. And uh, so how do we access Workbench? Uh, let's uh, understand Workbench is nothing but a PHP tool created by uh, Salesforce. Uh, uh, it's, it's open source again, it's on GitHub. It, it, when you're logging in, you would choose an environment and either production or a sandbox, we're gonna log into production. And I was talking about the APIs. So these are the APIs versions. And if you know, uh, these are the API versions which we, which we have been given to interact with. So I have been logged in with my credentials of uh, the, the demo org, which is Apex Hours demo org. I logged in, that was the authentication done. So I have already passed the stage of user authentication. Now to interact with Salesforce API, I just have to construct the URL and request the, uh, send the request and the response would come. Authentication is already done and uh, uh, it's, it's the application is taking care of the rest of the parts. So now if I just, uh, this is, uh, this, how do I reach this place is I went to REST Explorer. Okay, when you click on REST Explorer, it gives you uh, this page and it has various methods. If you just click on execute, just do nothing and just click on execute, it would talk about all the APIs which Salesforce supports the tooling API, metadata API, the, the other APIs which are there, Chatter API, and all those APIs, analytics APIs, all these things are being, uh, it can be accessed. And uh, if I just go to version 20, okay, and just click execute, you would see the number of APIs were less when it came in uh, because that is when Salesforce started exposing from version 20, it started exposing the uh, the REST APIs. But if I go to 15, there would be nothing because REST API operations only were supported in the API 20 and higher. Salesforce released API every year, but the REST API operations came into existence after version 20, okay? So, and uh, in right now we are looking at version 47, which has more functionalities. But the good thing is, even if you're, let's say you were uh, using Salesforce a couple of years back, you were using on version 30, 35, your application was built on that. Nothing would change underlying, even if it's 48, it would still remain the same schema, same architecture. Your code would be supported, everything will supported. It's, it's, it's compatible. The backward compatibility is taken care of by Salesforce. 
uh, only that it's enhanced. So we, it would be recommended by Salesforce to use the updated version. Okay. So now let's look at a, a, a small uh, demo of uh, inserting a case, how we would insert a case via the, uh, via the post call. So let's, let's, I would, uh, so what we, we would do is we would give a body to it. As I was telling you, this is the body. It's a post call. I've selected the uh, post and I am going to this URL services data version 47 as objects case. Now this URL, I don't, I'm not putting any appending any, my many of my, my domain uh, or when I'm doing through an application, I would be requested to put in the URL login at salesforce.com and then Salesforce will send back me the exact URL which I should be using for interacting, but I'm not doing because Workbench is taking care of all of that. I just have to create the URL and click execute and the, the case would be inserted. So you saw uh, we used the URL of case and we were able to insert a uh, case in Salesforce from the REST Explorer. Let's look at the uh, case created. Okay, so just now the case was uh, created and we had put in the subject and uh, description. So it worked via this. How about we wanna retrieve this uh, uh, case and or we wanna like query certain certain records uh, into uh, from Salesforce. You wanna query some records I was talking about when before starting this uh, demo. We want to query all the cases created today and we want to get the subject. It would be a get request. And how did I construct the URL again? Let's look at this. It, it, until here, everything is same. Instead of S object, the type is query. And instead of name of the object, we have question mark and we're putting the Q equals to select ID subject from case where created data equals to it. It's a SOQL you would have learned in the previous session, uh, sessions which were taken in. So we have written a simple SOQL querying the data from Salesforce and we're using the get method and then the response is being sent via Salesforce. And if you see it's a JSON response again, this is all JSON key value pair. And uh, the, the, even, the, even the post, when we posted the request was in the form of JSON, we put, put the body via the, uh, it was JSON construct. So if you look at the response, the good thing is it, it sends you the ID and subject definitely, but it also gives a URL if to, again, if you want to keep, if you want to interact with the op of the record, uh, we can use this URL to, to again, query, uh, get the exact, uh, just get the field out of that, of that record. So if I, if I use this URL directly, okay. So if you just click on this URL, it gives you the complete record. All the fields which are there on the case object are uh, shown to you. Some fields would be definitely null because we have not populated them and some values would be uh, present and some are by default, uh, the standard values, which are the created date, last modified date and all that. So this URL came in when we just requested the ID and the subject because Salesforce, if you want to, Query the exact record you get, you could use uh, that. So it's, it's making your job easy. So that is what I wanted to show you. So we inserted a record, we queried a record. This was interaction with the Salesforce's standard rest API. There was no custom code. We didn't have to write anything. There's nothing in the backend, which is giving this magically. Everything is standard. You can right away, try on your workbench. Okay. So that was uh, the demo, which I wanted to uh, show you. We used uh, the workbench, we inserted, we queried. Uh, I uh, showed you the difference between version 20 and this. It's just one thing I want to just uh, show you between uh, the disc what does the describe will do. Describe will give you the uh, object metadata and it would describe the object for you and it would tell you which all fields are present on the object uh, case. 
So you're describing this object and you would get all the fields. So you don't have to worry. If you don't know the metadata uh, of case object, you just have to request first the describe. It will send you all the, all the fields. Then based on that, you can then send a request to Salesforce. So uh, that's it uh, for this. Now let's look at the custom REST API. Uh, uh, what I have done is a small code, which is again in my uh, demo org. We have created a method which would create an opportunity. As I told you, there's an annotation. This class is global. First of all, I have used with sharing. If I don't have access, I would not be uh, allowed to create opportunity or any field access was not given to me, then I would not be able to update or insert on that field. Okay. So the rest at the rate rest resource is annotation we are using uh, to tell that this is a web service URL. You can construct your own URL. I've just written opportunities here. You can have op, op demo, anything. It can be anything. What is the use? We'll see that now. And then when it comes to uh, uh, the methods we have, created a HTTP post method where we are creating an opportunity. We are passing the parameters. Then we are creating an opportunity out of it, inserting and returning the opportunity. So let's look at the demo. Uh, we're going to see this in two ways. One is through workbench. One is through Postman. Again, it's uh, why Postman, I'll, I'll tell you. So let's look at uh, quickly from the workbench. So, uh, I was talking about the URL. It's very important if I had now we're going to do post. I don't have to do any refresh or session. I don't have to do anything because application is taking care of it. If the session is locked out, you would definitely have some session uh, timings, one hour, two hour that it should log out for any external users. So it would uh, automatically log me out if you on workbench, but now I am active. So it's not logging me out. Uh, the URL. If you see this URL, it, it, I have services, then Apex REST, because we are calling the Apex REST API. And then we are giving the URL mapping. The URL mapping is telling me which API resource to call. Okay, if it was opportunity or something changed, it would not know which API it is if there's no URL mapping done with that. And I would just send a body uh, this is the body which I'm sending again. It's a uh, JSON body. I have put in a name stage close date lead source as the parameters uh, for the uh, for the for the creation of the opportunity. So when I'm inserting this, okay, the body. And if I execute this, it would not work. Okay, no found. And the service not found. If I use opportunities, it would send me a ID, but it's it's and this is the the only negative part. Like it, you don't get to see the ID properly. So you just click on the show show raw response, and you would see the response with the opportunity ID. This is what we wanted, and uh, we look at the code also how this ID came in. It came through the code. So if I go to the uh, record. It was just newly created. We could see in there in Salesforce, it's it's been already created. Yeah. So just now we added this 627 p.m. Uh, in the time, and you could see this. This is the name name of the opportunity we get. So if I had to just uh, query this uh, opportunity, I would just again the way we had uh, got the. If I wanted to do a get request, I have written a method in the uh, in the in the backend. I will show you that, which should give me the uh, fields which are specifically written in that method. Which, sorry, once I'm I'm going to do a get request now. So I'm just putting the opportunity ID, and it would return me the fields which I have returned back from the method. So where is that uh, class? Let me just show you that and how this get request was uh, 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 sent or responded. Let, let us just see that. So this is the class which I've written opportunity manager. Okay, this is the HTTP get request. I told you there are various methods. So I have written an annotation as to get this is a get request. So whenever I'll call the opportunities URL 
and if it's a get request this method will be called automatically i don't have to worry about it and it would give me the opportunity by id so it's a rest request we would uh, uh, get the request from the rest context and then these are the class salesforce classes and i have the url and i would get ev everything from the url which is after the forward slash so we had sent the record id we got that into opportunity and into a string uh, into a string uh, object and then we are querying that opportunity uh, via that opportunity id and sending the result and that's how you were a, you were able to see the result over here if these fields were not sent if i didn't send the stage name that they, that would not come uh, that's that's the thing. if i would just save this now i have edited this and i'm saving it okay so if i execute now the stage name would not uh, come okay because i have removed that from the query so that's how uh, the custom get request is working post request you just now saw i showed you that i was able to insert uh, the record let's let's look at how do we put patch and uh, we can we can delete okay so what is put it would uh, absurd it would do an absurd if the the id which we are going to pass as a parameter if it's not found it would then insert the opportunity okay so let's let's look at the demo for that so we have an opportunity we going to uh, do a put request let me just send you uh, send this uh, put this body over here we're using a put and we have this opportunity with this opportunity is already being created uh, so let me use this one right now so that it okay so we're going to just change the name of the opportunity the name was apex i was opportunity new we're changing it to apex one more test and stage remains the same close it remains the same source is still web and you're putting the id okay because this record exists it should update this record okay and uh, let's let's check it out what happens okay show our response the opportunity id is returned let's refresh this and see what happened yep the name got updated to apex one more test because it had the id and this id was a valid id that's why uh, it updated the record instead of inserting what if the id was not present okay it it, it gave an error because it was expecting a string and uh, and we sent not we have sent nothing so blank i just want to change some uh, variable here let's say t and just send it something went wrong okay so it was not able to find this id that's why uh, so if it id was not present it would uh, it would automatically uh, update the uh, it would create a new record so now let's look at the patch patch would always do what is if you see the uh, patch is supposed to just update a field uh, any fields which you which you send in the body okay so you are doing a patch on a specific record let's look at again this record we use this record id and uh, what is the patch method is doing the patch method is updating the opportunity fields we would get the id from the url and we would get the id uh, query that record once we have this opportunity record we would uh, just deserialize the again the body which we have sent and each parameters we would uh, we would get each parameter from the body and then on this opportunity here we would start putting the the field name and uh, the exact value so this is a way we are not even querying those fields because we don't know which fields we will be sending through the body we don't have to worry about it it's a generic code which we have written it is just updating the specific fields sent by the uh, sent from the body we don't have to worry which fields are coming 
So let's look at this. So we are sending the name, we're sending the each source. If these fields don't exist on the record, they'll not get updated. Okay, and we have sent the URL with the ID and when we do execute it updated and let's look at the name should have changed to patch demo instead of one more test. So if you see that the opportunity has been updated. So we didn't send the fields exactly, but it knew. Uh, so we just kept added. Uh, we kept adding it by by reading. We decentralized the JSON request body. We got the parameters and it's a key value pair, which I told you. So we got the each key. So let's say the first name, uh, first field was name. And then I put the value of the name. Then the second field was lead source and I put the value of them. And I just put it on the, this opportunity record, which I have queried. I updated this and I returned the ID. It's simple. It's a generic code. We didn't have to write any uh, hard coded uh, field names. So that was the uh, that was the uh, patch demo. So uh, we saw get post patch put. What is the another uh, way we can access this was Postman. I wanted to do this uh, again in front of you so that you would know. So it's a tool which I have uh, downloaded. You would have to go to the Postman URL to download this tool. Uh, the URL is there. So if you want to interact from what uh, I was telling you, th uh, third party, you, you, you could, you could uh, uh, create a third party application you could interact with. Okay. So you are, let's say this is a third party application. You don't have anything. You don't have session maintain. Nothing is there. You're starting from scratch and uh, you're going to do a post request. Okay, in Java, you would write the code, everything like you'd be writing and you would get, uh, get all the libraries for interacting with Salesforce and you would write this. But Postman again uh, has the capability to do post to any any URL. So we have, uh, we are using this. Again, we will be authenticating things here. How we are able to talk to uh, talk through Postman is through connected app. Let me show you a connected app first. And what all, uh, what all resources, we are using from the from the connected app for for constructing the request and otherwise it would it would not allow us to interact with salesforce so let's look at this we got went to setup we went to app manager and we have created a connected app already so we are viewing that uh this connected app if you were Trading from the scratch, we would put in everything. Uh, I'll show you that. Uh, so we, right now, it's important is the consumer key and the consumer secret. Without this, we'll not be able to uh, call Salesforce. As I was saying, it has the OAuth mechanism. It would expect uh, uh, this uh, uh, the key and the secret without username, without password, without this key, without secret. You're not be able to call Salesforce. And again, we are giving the auth scopes. So let's uh, let's try to uh, see how this will work. And also, let me just uh, create one so that you would know what is what I'm talking about. So you saw this. There's uh, when we went to like app, app manager, we have Lightning app and new connected app. So this is the uh, connected app uh, UI. Uh, it would have the connected app name. You would put in the API name, uh, the email, which which email you want to go with, and then you would do is enable OAuth settings, and you would give the callback URL. I had given apexhours.com. You could give any callback URL, and then what all scopes you need to cater. Selected OAuth scopes like you want to give access to Chatter API, Clear API, Wave API, Data API. So we have only given this access, and we have given offline access, uh, perform requests on your behalf at any time because it allows you to refresh the token offline access. That's why this is very much needed. If otherwise it would immediately time out as soon as it sends that so, uh, token, it would, it would just time out. So this uh, is the scopes. And then you, if you want to give full access, then it would have full access, vision force, web, all these other uh, what scopes, which we need to give. And then we just have to go and save this and don't worry about anything. That's it. So that's how you will create a connected app. We have already created our connected app, which I told you, and we have the client secret and client. 
Now we're doing a post request. So let me uh, uh, show you the code which we have written is this. Okay. Uh, what we have written here is we are calling first the uh, login dot salesforce.com is the URL because we don't know what's the custom domain in for this org using the services we are using or two and token based uh, access and grant type is password we are giving the client ID which I showed you just now we are giving the client secret okay and then we are giving the username and password uh, it's not good to expose this but I'm just showing you in the demo that we have the username and password over here put in the URL okay so it's a post request again this would be done in inside an application so you would not be exposing it to people so it would be always recommended to store it somewhere in the in the uh, files where you could just access the variables from that file instead of hard coding the username and password in the in the in the application it automatically added uh, the the params these are the params which we are sending in the url so i could even just send the put the url and put all the params here but i've put in the url directly it's important to set the headers content type is set as uh, JSON. Okay. Because we're sending the request as JSON and then we would be set authorization. Okay. Uh, we would be authorizing this uh, request. So we would need to be, uh, we would be sending the authorization first. We will, uh, call the uh, request without this so that we can get the token sorry one second yeah first we're going to do a get request so that we can get the session id let me just do that and get the token okay cool oh sorry So we call the URL without any uh, any body this time because we wanted to first get the access token from Salesforce. Without this access token, we would not be not be able to do any interaction. And then we call the instance URL. So first we call the Salesforce. So uh, it's a two-step process. First is a handshake that we are telling Salesforce, we are sending you this uh, username, password, client ID, client secret, please send me that session ID or the access token, okay? Access token would be used for the next set of requests and we don't have to then give in the password, username again and again. This access token will be used for the future connections, okay? So once I have uh, uh, passed the parameters and I've got, so if you go, uh, I've got the access token, I would keep this stored somewhere and you would definitely do it when you are doing uh, your uh, application based uh, uh, calling to Salesforce. And it has given me an instance URL. It's very critical because this is the URL which we're going to use to interact with. Okay. Now uh, let's uh, call our Apex REST opportunities uh, URL. So if you see this, this is the URL which I have used, which came in from Salesforce. So this is the URL. It needs to have this URL and I'm calling the again the Apex REST which we have created the opportunities Apex REST because that is exposed and then I'm going to put in the uh, header. Okay, let me just create a new request. It'd be better. Uh, so it's a post request again. Okay, and we are calling this URL. We're going to have to construct the header header would uh, header is needed over here not in the previous one sorry for that so when i'm doing content type i would put in the application json because i'm going to send a body now and i'm going to took i'm going to put authorization because we have the access token and it i have to write a uh, bearer and then put in the put, put in the access token so this is the access token which we would send because salesforce would know now that this this request is coming from a authorized application i don't have to worry about it because it's sending the authorization token okay and when i send this it would give me a uh, okay sorry 
I have not sent the body. I'm sorry for that. So I have sent it the header, but I have not sent the body and that's why the error came in. I have to send the uh, bo this body, which is the JSON request. So when I am sending the body now, I sh ex should expect that it would give me the uh, opportunity ID and it came back with the opportunity ID. So let me just go to the opportunity ID. So this is the opportunity just now created. And if you see this, it was created by integration user at 6.45 PM because we use the integration users username and password. As told you, whenever you're authenticating, uh, you would need, uh, whenever you want to use integration, you will always keep a separate user, not mix it with the, uh, the users which are part of the system. Then you would not know what happened, what came through UI and what came through integration. So we have specifically used, follow the best practice. We have used integration user. We have uh, inserted the record using insert, uh, integration user and we have just now successfully inserted using Postman. So in, uh, in short, repeating uh, what all things we did because we are running out of time because there are uh, more demos to be done. We created a post URL. First, we called the login.salesforce.com. We got the access token. We constructed the post URL. The second request uh, uh, had the authorization access token. Without this, we, could have, we couldn't have uh, inserted the opportunity and then we were able to insert the opportunity. Okay, so if any doubts, we could, we could definitely clear out later and I will jump on to the uh, next demo. So we used Postman, we did, uh, we did a post. We, we're not gonna do the query because of running out of time. So let's look at SOAP quickly. Uh, 